So what is journalism? Journalism has an actual dictionary definition, and that is reporters taking press releases and just repackaging them as an article. We've redefined journalism where journalists read um, scientific literature and then report it in an incurious way. Instead of looking deeply into the research, the flaws that underlie the research, they choose the easy headline. The problems with journalism are, are not just that they're not telling the story, but that they're missing the best story. They're missing the interesting parts of the story. They're missing what the story actually tells. And the problem with journalism is not just because of the journalist, the journalist who's writing the article, but often it begins with the research. It's poor research that is then reported poorly to the population. And so the readers, the viewers, get the wrong idea about medical research, healthcare research, and what to do with this research. The first deadly sin of journalism is that association does not equal causation. We all know this. We know that just because people who carry matches are more likely to develop lung cancer than people who don't carry matches, that doesn't mean that carrying matches cause lung cancer. However, researchers very commonly stumble into associations and then assume that that means that one thing causes another. This is important medical research, actually, because sometimes these associations end up being causative, and causative relationships are critical for medical science, because if there's causation, we know that preventing one thing can prevent something else, or maybe giving a treatment can cause a disease to resolve, and it can be a very important um, finding. But those are just hypothesis-generating findings. Um, our problem is that frequently with journalism, a, a journalist will say that X causes Y, that running in a different way will reduce injuries, even if it's just an association. And then people who read the article will make changes to their diet, to their exercise patterns, maybe take a new medication, when in fact it's only associated with an outcome and not causative. For the second deadly sin of journalism, I'm going to talk about extrapolation and generalization. I'm going to talk about them on this beautiful ancient road, hopefully giving us a way forward. We all want more. We want drugs that work better. We want exercise that does more for us. Everybody wants more. Researchers want more. Readers want more. Journalists want more. And therefore, everybody is prone to extrapolate their findings. They want a study that shows improvement in life expectancy of a month in mice to extrapolate to human beings. They want a study that shows that exercise improves outcomes in four college men to extrapolate to all of us, that we can all do better if we exercise just a little bit more or a little bit earlier in the day or a little bit later in the day. When you read articles and you hear researchers or journalists extrapolating findings from in vitro experiments to life or to experiments in mice or dogs or monkeys to human beings, you should be suspicious. The third sin of journalism is ignoring selection bias, confounding, and other biostatistical or epidemiologic errors. This is a hard one. We often spend months teaching medical students how to read the medical literature and appraise the medical literature and making sure that they find problems with studies and only adopt treatments from studies that really make sense. It might seem like a lot to ask journalists to do the same thing, but this is their job. This is their profession. We think that journalists should really be experts in critical appraisal, should be able to read articles and ask the researchers the difficult questions about does this article really prove what the researcher says it proves, 
or maybe asks, does it actually prove something different? The fourth deadly sin of journalism is ignoring plausibility. There are articles that you read that if you told the results to a friend, your friend would say, get out of here, that's ridiculous. When we read articles as medical doctors, we think about the articles in terms of our pretest probability. We say, how likely is this to be actually the truth? We often forget about that when we're reading journalism, when we're reading articles in the lay press. Journalists will try to tell us that eating three blueberries a day or eating four chilies a week will be more effective at preventing heart disease than our best drugs or our best surgeries. When we hear that, we have to stop, we have to think, we have to say, there's no way that this is possible. We need more research, we need to ask more questions. The fifth deadly sin of journalism, the disclaim and pivot maneuver. This is a red flag. When you see this, you know you are reading journalism. The author will appropriately tell you that maybe what you're reading here is not important. Maybe this is just an association. Maybe more research is needed. And this is the right thing for the author to do. But the problem is that the author will immediately shift to going back to their flawed reasoning. Uh, things that you may read in articles is, this may just be an association and not causation. You should certainly talk to your doctor. You should wait for more research. But as soon as this sentence is made, the journalist, the journalist who's writing an article that we would classify as journalism, goes back to their original article. This is a sign that you should pause, you should ask questions, and you should probably ignore the article you've been reading. Sin number six. Keep testing, report only once. This is actually not just a problem for journalism, but truly is a problem for the entire medical literature. Researchers have a ton of flexibility as far as how they run their research, how they test their hypotheses, how they adjust their data. The medical literature also chooses what research to even publish to get out there for journalists and, and physicians and scientists to read. When a journalist interviews a researcher, the journalist really has to ask, so what else is being done? What other data have you suppressed, maybe not intentionally, and what other data have you tried to publish but could not get published? Because very often what we're seeing is the, you know, the tip of the proverbial iceberg, right? Where we see one result, but in fact there are hundreds of other results which may affect how we adopt therapy and what the results actually mean. the seventh deadly sin of journalism. And this sin maybe covers them all and maybe is the most important. It is being incurious. This is that reporters, journalists, really don't ask the important questions. What they do is they talk to whoever wrote the story, they take the story as the researcher wants it to be told and reports that. They don't think deeply about the difficult questions. What are the other things that, this, that these results could show? Um, let me pull in other experts to ask that question too. Because very often, the best questions and, and actually the most interesting story is, is not what's in the article, but is what's not in the article. And this is what journalists do when they report on the news, when they report on politics. And we think that journalists really should do this when they're reporting medical literature and healthcare literature as well. Mm -hmm.